Welcome back to the Living Markets. The market mood is looking grim once again, just like the January weather these past few days. Carlos Mejia from Rothschild and Co. Bank is joining me now to discuss whether alternative asset classes could offer any glimmer of hope. Thank you so much for joining us, Carlos. It's a pleasure. So, is there any hint that the investment climate is getting any better anytime soon? We think so. It's been actually very hard, as you say, especially December, what we have all suffered as investors. Uh, we have seen the first days of the month actually started to pick up a little bit in the equity market. We do think that that will continue. In fact, we don't think the, the environment is as grim as many people believe. Now, you actually also believe that a no-deal Brexit would actually not be as bad as many economists and analysts are suggesting. Why do you think that? Well, I think that any result in the short term is going to be very volatile. It's going to be very disruptive. But we think that the UK economy will be resilient to withstand a no-deal um, exit in the end. The reason is that um, there are many services that could be very domestically oriented that can continue to benefit from the strength of the economy. But nevertheless, in the very short term, that will be disruptive, whether there is a deal, whether there is no deal, whether there is exit or not. Now, obviously, uh, volatility that you mentioned is going to continue this year as well because of the uh, slowdown in profits. Also, we get uh, U.S. banks' profits uh, this week and, of course, uh, the geopolitical tensions and also the uh, rising U.S. interest rates. How important do you think is volatility going to be in the next few weeks? Well, very important. I mean, to be honest, we do think that volatility is going to stay high, not just for the next few days, not just for the next few weeks, but for the rest of the year. So now we think that investors are going to have to be a lot more disciplined going forward, rather than just hoping to stay sitting on one investment from now till the end of the year. 12 months of volatility, that's kind of a gloomy picture. Now, what kind of hedging and protection strategy do you advise uh, should your portfolio managers take? Well, it's right. So volatility is gloomy, but we do think that the trend is going to be higher. So it's going to be higher, but with volatility. In terms even of Even higher, that's even more pessimistic. Well, it's not very pessimistic. I mean, we all, we've always had volatility. If you look at the past 10 years, you know, look at the amount of volatility we had. We, we were going to have problems with China. We were going to have uh, problems with a potential disintegration of Europe. We were going to have problems with, with a potential nuclear war with North Korea. We were going to have plenty of reasons to have um, massive issues. In the end, equities managed to rally. So going forward, we do think that volatility is going to be high, but we do think that equities will remain the, the year higher than they are today because valuations are still uh, very fair. We do think that the economy is resilient. Um, consumers continue to spend. And we do think that the balance sheet of the banks and the balance sheet of, of the per persons will continues to be really healthy. But still, it's kind of a risky thing to say, right? That stocks are more profitable than bonds. Uh, so in your recent research note, you also wrote that stocks are the preferred asset class uh, compared to bonds and fixed income. Why are bonds uh, so much junk right now? Well, no, it's not that every bond is a junk out there. But to be honest, when you look at the investment grade, and you are getting in Switzerland negative yields, in Europe in most of the current negative years, in the US marginally positive years, uh, yields, it's very, very difficult to be very, very positive on bonds. So we do think that, that bonds will not collapse, but they are not going to be spectacular investments. On the other side, we do think that equities from current values are going to give you better value to the end of the year than bonds. And talking about <laughs> bonds, though, uh, you wrote uh, recently that you're preferring government bonds uh, to high-yield corporate bonds right now. So do you trust the government uh, bonds uh, much more at this stage? No, no, we prefer corporate bonds to government bonds. Why? And uh, why is that? Just because we do think that the profitability and the health of the balance sheets of many of the companies is better than many of the governments. And uh, plus, when you get a credit spread on top of that, it sort of justifies the risk that you take for, for holding the corporate bonds. So, so looking at the uh, conventional asset classes in 2019, what would be your top bet at this stage? So we prefer, as you correctly say, equities to bonds. Within the equities, we continue to like um, consumer discretionary. We like healthcare, for example, and we continue to like uh, technology. Um, 
On the technology is interesting because we had this huge stocks uh, plunge uh, last uh, autumn, especially in the US, especially among the FANG. What makes you think that uh, technology stocks are something good and worth investing in? Well, they continue to be driving the, the many of the innovation in the economy going forward. When you look at many of the trends that people are investing, they are all related to economy, to, to technology. You think at cybersecurity, when you look at um, um, for example, uh, energy storage, um, e-commerce, all of these are very driven by technology innovation. So we do think that the valuations are compelling, especially after the drop, and we do think that all of these themes will continue to push the valuations higher. U.S. Uh, government bond yields are actually rising again uh, slightly, but what about emerging market bonds? Uh, would you look at any specific emerging market at this point in terms of fixed income? Um, we like, in general, the only part of the emerging markets that we like is the Asian emerging markets. And the reason for that is that we continue to believe that whatever the um, Chinese economy and the region are doing, to improve the, the profitability of the companies and the economy as a whole is going to help all of these companies. The changing in culture from becoming a domestically driven Chinese economy, much more than an export-oriented producer, is going to change the whole dynamics. So therefore, we do think that the best opportunities are in emerging Asia, and that's where we hold this. What about less conventional asset classes uh, this year, for example? Uh, we look at exotic funds, we look at direct holdings into real estate, classic cars, winery, forestry, art uh, funds, and so on. What about that? There are many opportunities in the space. Um, I have to say that is not a, the kind of opportunity that is relevant and uh, suitable and appropriate for everybody. But they are <laughs> less cyclical and also more long-term They are more long-term, they are less cyclical. You're, you're absolutely right. Uh, we particularly like private debt and private equity in the space. Uh, you did mention um, others like forestry, winery and all of that. Many of our private clients uh, prefer wine and art than forestry and some of the other commodities. And I guess the main risks really are that these assets are illiquid, they're difficult to track, and also lacking indices, for example, and incredibly uh, unprotected as well. Are these the main challenges for these mm. unconventional asset classes? Well, I wouldn't call them challenges. There is a premium for the illiquidity, as you call them, and there is a premium for waiting the long time to deliver. So for, for people who are willing to, to invest, willing to wait, um, they are very compelling challenges. And do you see a rising interest uh, here in Switzerland into these uh, unconventional asset classes like forestry and winery and so on at this point because of the uh, stock volatility? Not in the short term. Not in the short term. <laughs> Thank you so much uh, for your pleasure. time, Carlos. That's it for the Living Markets tonight. And coming up on tonight's On the Block, we talk to Swisscom Blockchain's CEO who is going to discuss the company's expansion into Shanghai this year. Plus, our newsmaker is academic and former diplomat Kishore Mahbubani, author of the provocative book, Has the West Lost It? And don't forget, you can watch all of our content that you missed tonight, all our interviews and stories on cnnmoney.ch. There's plenty more to come here on the Swiss Pulse, so don't go away.